Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make the cozy kiddo poncho. This is a really cute poncho that uses a new yarn from Red Heart called Super Saver Stripes. Super Saver Stripes is part of the Super Saver family, so everything you love about Super Saver now comes in a uh, variety of wonderful, really vibrant, bright colors. Let's go ahead and take a look what you need to complete this pattern. First of all, this is a free pattern available over on redheart.com. I will put a link in the video description box below or you can find all the information you need on my blog. Once you have the free pattern downloaded, you will need to also grab some Super Saver Stripes and you can get it in any colorway you want. And the number you need here is one or two skeins depending on the size you're making. You will also need a pair of size eight 16 inch circular needles because the pattern is written in the round. You will need a good pair of scissors, a stitch marker, and you all know I like to make my own stitch markers, and I can show you how to do that on the YouTube channel right here. And then of course, last but not least, a bent tip tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Go ahead and grab your pattern and your materials, and I'll show you everything you need to know to complete this really great poncho. This pattern has you begin casting on 80 stitches and I want to use the long tail cast on method. So I want to make sure that my tail is going to be long enough. So I know that the opening of my poncho is roughly about 20 inches. So I'm going to guesstimate 20 inches in length and then I am going to take that length and I am going to do that three times. So I have three times the length that is roughly 20 inches. Then I'm gonna just give myself just a little bit of extra wiggle room and at this point, this is where I will place my slip knot. So what I do is I take the working yarn, place it in the palm of my hand, take the tail, wrap it around my forefinger and middle finger. When I come back up, I cross over. I rotate my hand over, go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop, and off. And I am left with a slip knot that I will then place onto my circular needles. Now you need to use circular needles because this pattern is written to be in the round. Once you have your slip knot placed on your circular needles, you want to place the tail on the left side of the needle and the working yarn towards the right side. You will now begin to do a long tail cast on. You want to position the yarn so that way your needle is between your thumb and your forefinger and you are grabbing the two extended parts. So I have the tail wrapped around my thumb and the yarn, the working yarn wrapped around my forefinger. I now am in a sling so slingshot position and I'm ready to do my long tail cast on. I start at the bottom of my thumb, go up my thumb, swivel around to the tip of my finger, come down my finger. Now I have this nice little opening right here and I'm going to swivel my needle right through that opening and off. When I do go off, I slightly pull those tails to make the stitch a little bit tighter around my needle and I begin again. You'll notice I am holding on to my stitches here on the needle so they don't fall off. Let's do this again. Up the thumb, down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. Give my tails a nice little pull. Up the thumb, down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. Reposition, up the thumb, down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. You continue doing this until you get 80 stitches on your needle. Once you get 80 stitches on your needle, it looks a little bit like this. I'll pull in one I've already completed. Right here, I have finished my 80 stitches, and as I set my needle down, you can see all of the stitches are laid nicely around my 16 inch circular. At this point, you wanna make sure that this nice little edging that we've created with the long tail cast on is all pointed towards the inside of the circle. You wanna make sure it is not twisted, okay? So if all of a sudden you see that it looks a little bit like that, we don't want that twist, we want it all to be even. Because if we had that twist, then all of a sudden our work as we begin to work in the round isn't going to pan out. Once everything looks like it's just like so, you will then go ahead and pick up your work and with the needles facing towards you and the cable with all the stitches on it facing away from me, we are going to work our stitches. The first thing we wanna do is place our stitch marker onto the right hand needle. 
Once that stitch marker is in place, it signifies the beginning of our round. Every time we come back to this stitch marker, we will know we have completed one full round of knitting. Now our working yarn is on the needle that's in our right hand, and the needle that's in our left hand has the very first stitch we put on. So that was my slip stitch, and then all my subsequent long tail cast on stitches afterwards. I can go ahead, position my yarn, and let's see, I'll start off with this one with the yarn in my right hand to begin with. And I simply start knitting. So I take my right hand needle, go into that stitch, yarn over my right hand needle, and come off. Now, here's something very important. When this stitch jumps off, you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of slack right there because that'll make it so that you get a run in your stitches. So you really want to make sure that you pull that stitch nice and tight and you pull up any extra slack that might be between the last stitch you did over on the right hand needle and the one you just knit. Once you've pulled that slack, you're ready to continue on. So you just continue on knitting and you will knit five rounds and when you come back to the stitch marker at each round, that'll let you know that you've completed all the stitches for one round. So you will have to get back to your stitch marker a total of five times, correct? To make sure that we have five rounds. Go ahead and knit five rounds on your poncho and then it's time to begin the little bit of lace that's incorporated in this poncho pattern. As you're knitting along and you come to the end of your round and you get to the stitch marker, simply insert your right hand needle into the marker and slip it over. And that would complete one full round. Then you would carry on just knitting once again. Let me show you once again how to treat this stitch marker. I'm to the end of my round. I'm simply moving my marker over to my opposite needle and continuing on. Super easy and I know you can do it too. The stitch markers are meant to be a place in the knitting that tells you there's something going on. For this one, it's to let you know that it's the end of your round. Now, stitch markers come in many different forms, and when you're working with a piece like this that is signifying the beginning of a round specifically, I find that it's really important that you use stitch markers that are not so big, they're gonna distort the size of your stitches on either side of it. So having said that, you can see here that my marker is on a nice uh, wire, it's called a jewelry wire, and it doesn't interfere with any of the stitches on either side, so it's not gonna make it look like it has a run in the stitches. If you were to use a large, like safety pin looking marker, it actually could distort the size of those stitches on either side of your beginning and your end, and it could make it look like you have a run in your knitting, sort of like a run in your pantyhose. So when you go to choose your stitch marker, make sure you're choosing one that is roughly the same size as the needle you are using as far as the opening, or one that is similar to mine where the wire is adjustable and it doesn't interfere with any of those stitches. If you want more instructions on how to create the markers like I have, you can check out the video I've created right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it right, let's see, it'd be right over there in the I button. I'll also put a link in the video description box below, uh, the same place you went to get the link for the free pattern. Now let's go ahead, finish your five rounds, and then we can jump into the simple lace pattern that is incorporated in this super cute poncho. Once you finish the five rounds, you're ready to begin the simple lace eyelet patterns that are created in this really great poncho. These little eyelet patterns are made up by doing knit two togethers and yarn overs. Let me show you how to do these. When you're at the end of your round, you'll begin with a knit two together, and that is done by simply taking your right hand needle, sticking it into the second stitch from the tip of your left hand needle and the first stitch. So you simply just go into both of them, just as if you would if you were knitting. Then you simply knit these two stitches together. See how that works? So what was two stitches has now become one. When you're working lace, you wanna make sure that you do not change your stitch count, where if we just did these knit two togethers, we would be one less stitch. So we wanna make sure we increase our stitch now, and we will do that by working a yarn over. Our yarn is in back, we bring it up between our needles, then you bring it over top of your right hand needle and back to the back. I like to take my thumb and rest it right there on that little yarn over, that's what that is, that yarn that's resting right on your right hand needle. I like to put my thumb on that so it doesn't go anywhere. 
and then we carry on in pattern, which would be knit two together. So we work our knit two together once again, yarn over, and you'll notice that this yarn over that we did there is just resting on our right hand needle there. And so this one, when it is worked to complete our knit two together and come off, you'll see it looks like you have a little piece of string that's just resting on your right hand needle and it looks like you have a hole. Perfect, that's what we want. That is our lace. So now that we've done our knit two together, we wanna do our yarn over again. Our yarn is in back, bring it up between our needles, go back to the back over top of our right hand needle. I like to put my thumb on it, and then I work my knit two together. Yarn over my right hand needle, come through and off. You see that? So I just did my knit two together, it's time for my yarn over, so I go between my needles come back up and over my right hand needle, put my thumb on it, and then work my knit two together. Then I will work my yarn over and I carry on. What you will notice is as you work these stitches all the way around, your very last stitch before your stitch marker will be a yarn over. And it's important you remember that because if you don't, your stitches will be off count. Go ahead and complete this full round. Just to reiterate what I said to you, I wanna make sure you see this last set of repeats. I will go ahead and do my knit two together and before I slip my marker, I wanna make sure I do my yarn over. Now that I've done my yarn over, I slip my marker and I'm ready to carry on. Now, let's take a look at the stitches as they're on our needle so you can see what yours look like are absolutely perfect if you've done it just like I told you to. What you will notice is that it looks like you have a stitch and then a piece of string that is just resting over top of your needle. And then a stitch and a piece of string, a stitch and a piece of string. That's what you should have. If you're not confident that you have that all the way around, take a moment right now and just go through the entire round you just completed and try and pinpoint the knit two together, the yarn over, the knit two together, the yarn over. You will easily be able to distinguish where the yarn overs are because they literally, literally look like a piece of string resting on your needle and it looks like they're creating a hole. If everything is perfect, you're ready to move on. And so row two and three, you actually will just knit. So I've already slipped my marker. All I wanna do is I will go into each stitch all the way around and knit. When you come to your yarn overs, they will look like this. And you simply want to just go into the stitch like you normally would and knit it. Then you'll come to the stitch where it was your knit two together. And then the next one will be the one that looks like a yarn over because it is, and you will knit it. Yes, this is creating holes in your knitting. That's what we want because we're creating lace. We want. Once you've done this for two rounds, you will then go back into your lace pattern again, only this time we're going to shift it over by one. And I will show you how that is done once I finish these two rounds. Once you've completed two rounds, your work looks a little something like this. You should be able to see where their yarn overs are separated by one stitch and all of the openings are looking really cool and lace-like. Now to offset the lace, what the designer has done is on this next round, we will begin with a knit one and then jump into our lace pattern. What that means is we will end with a knit one also. So our stitch count has not changed. We still only have 80 stitches on our needle, but we're creating some really great lace stitches. Let me show you. I've already slipped my marker and I'm ready to begin my next round. I go ahead and I knit one stitch. Now I will jump into my repeat, which is knit two together and then yarn over. My yarn's in back, between my needles, over top of my right hand needle, and then I pause. That's one yarn over. Then I continue on with my repeat. Knit two together, yarn over. Knit two together, yarn over. And I continue on all the way to the end of the round. 
At the end of the round, because I began with a knit one, I will also want to end with a knit one. So on this round, you will begin and end with a knit one, but all of the stitches in between are the really simple lace. At the end of the row, when you knit that one last stitch before your marker, you will then go ahead and take a look at your knitting. Once again, you will see that on your needle, it looks like there is a stitch and then a string resting over top of your needle. That's perfect, that's what we want because that stitch resting over top of our needle is your yarn over and you've coupled that with the knit two together and so that increase coupled with the decrease makes it so that you have the same stitch count. Pretty cool, right? Now that you know how to do the stockinette in the round, the simple lace pattern, you would continue on working stockinette in the round for another three rounds. And then it's time to actually increase so that way you can get the shape of the poncho. As we take a look at the poncho here, we can see that we began up here and it has a nice little rolled edge and that's created by the five rounds of knitting we began with. Once we finished that knitting, we jumped into the lace portion. And now it's time for you to do three rounds of knitting. Once you've completed those three rounds of knitting, it's time to work a make one increase, which is a virtually invisible increase. It will give us the extra stitches we need to get the circumference of the poncho we need as it goes down and around the shoulders. These increases are virtually invisible. You literally cannot see it in there. Once you work these increases, the rest of the pattern is just a combination of the lace stitches and the stockinette, and then the make one increases depending on the size you're making. Now these make one increases are super simple, and I'm going to show you how to do them now, and I'm going to show you on a different little swatch, so that way I don't have to knit another three rounds on the sample swatch, but you'll know exactly what it is you need to do in order to complete these. For this example, I have made some stockinette stitches and I have gone ahead and switched colors. I've just tied on a new color here at the ends so that you can distinguish between the stitches I'm creating and the stitches I'm um, working into. The instructions say to go ahead and knit eight stitches. So you will knit across eight stitches just like normal. No big deal there. What will make the difference here is when we get done with our eighth stitch, we will work a make one. And so let's get okay, two, four, six, seven, eight. Now that I have knit my eight stitches, it's time to do a make one. I will take my left hand needle and into that stitch right there, that string that's between the stitch on this needle I just knit into and needle or the stitch that's on the needle. I take my left hand needle and I will scoop up the stitch just like so. So see how it's resting on my needle? It actually looks like a yarn over, doesn't it? Well, if I were to knit into the stitch from the front like normal, it would create a hole just like a yarn over. And we don't want that hole there. So what you need to do is once you scoop that stitch up, you will then take your right hand needle and you will go in to the back leg of that stitch. You see how I'm going through the back leg of that stitch and I will knit it from the back leg. When I do that, it twists that string that I picked up and it makes it look like it is an invisible increase. So as I carry on, you actually won't be able to see where that stitch is created. It's right there, but if everything is done correctly, you don't get a hole, you don't get anything um, resembling an extra stitch or an, an, a hole or anything like that. It just works seamlessly into your knitting. For this pattern, the repeat is knit eight, make one. Knit eight, make one, all the way around. Once you've done that, you know how to do the rest as far as working in stockinette stitch in the round and the lace portion in the round. Depending on what size you're going to make, that will determine how often you have to do these make one increases. But they're really simple and that is the only time in your pattern that your stitch count actually changes after you do the make ones. As long as you couple up your yarn over increase with your knit two together decrease, your stitch count on those rounds will not change. Once you've completed all of the rounds for your poncho, you will bind off your stitches. And it's really simple to bind off. Let me show you how to do that. 
Once again, I'm gonna come back to my little sample swatch here and I've gone ahead and I've knit two stitches. Once you've knit two stitches and it's time to bind off, you take your left hand needle, have the first stitch you knit actually jump up and over the second stitch and off your needle. You're left with one stitch on your right hand needle. You go ahead and knit that next stitch and then you have that back stitch jump up and over that front stitch. Knit one more stitch, have that back stitch jump up and over that front stitch. You'll notice that all of your stitches are getting bound off and there's nothing left remaining. Until the very end, when you have that last stitch jump, you would simply cut your yarn and give it a pull and then weave in your ends. Let's take a look at the finished poncho. And you can see here, this is the finished edge and it also has that nice rolled edge just like when you began with those knitted rounds. And the bind off is a really nice row of really beautiful, V stitches and that's just because one stitch jumped over the next and you'll notice it's not super tight so you want to make sure as you're binding off you don't let those stitches get super tight. One way to combat that is if you have a spare needle around jump up a size or two from the size eights that is used on this pattern. Maybe use a pair of size 10 needles just for the bind off round. That'll make your stitches a little bit larger and give you a little bit more wiggle room as far as stretch. Now you know everything you need to know in order to make this really cozy kiddo poncho. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and you'll smash that like button as my kids say and come back here for more videos showing you how to become a better knitter and crocheter right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Thank you so much, talk to you soon. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm sure there are other videos here that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check out some of my knitting and crochet videos as well as some of my crafting videos. You will love them, I promise. If you hit subscribe, you'll be up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye.